Good morning, everyone. You hear me? Yeah, in the back? Good. Uh, and today I'm feeling, I would say, excited because this is like singing in a you know, concert. I've never been talking like this. You know, sometimes you use the microphone. of me, but I'm a colleague of Elena from long ago, and I teach in a secondary school in Córdoba, but I've also been doing teacher training for many years, okay? Um, just a few comments. My school, just to make you an idea, my school is, um, is a bilingual school, but the main language is French. So the students who follow the bilingual program in my school do French as the first language and English as a, as a second language. But, but, we have five feeding schools, okay? One of those feeding schools is a French bilingual school. Another feeding school is a German bilingual school. And the remaining, the other three schools have no program. They do simply English as a foreign language. So, our students, when we get the students in Primero de Eso, they are better in the second language, which is English, than in the first language of the program, which is French. Only about 20% of our Primero de Eso students know some French. Okay? So it's a kind of special bilingual program because when they get to a good level of French, is that, you know, by the end of the third year of ESO or fourth year of ESO, when they get like a balance between the first and the second language. So for us, it's very comfortable being even the second foreign language teacher because I can do whatever I want. They are quite good. Okay? So, um, I live in the 21st century and I use technologies. But I not uh, technology crazy. So I use it. You will see that my colleagues are a lot more technicians than me. So what we are going to do today is very much of hands-on. Okay? What we are doing today is something that I do with the first year of ESO students. So you can translate many of those things with the quinto and sexto de primaria because it's quite similar. Okay? It would be risky for me to say that you can do the same with Primero de Primaria. But what we're doing is very well, you can do it very well with the fifth and sixth years of your school students. Okay? Um, can you read the quotation there? It says, arriving at a one goal is a starting point to another. The reference is 1916. I am a little bit mad, but not 100%. I mean, using a quotation, you know, 100 years old. But it's John Dewey. You know John Dewey? Have you read of anything from him? John Dewey. If you are doing like um, learning by doing, experiential learning, project work, so he's one of the fathers, one of the founders. Okay, John Dewey. And the quotation is very nice because uh, it connects what we are doing today. The end of one of our speeches is the beginning for something else. You can apply that quotation to many parts of your life, but a lot, you can use it a lot for education. When you arrive at one goal, it's just the beginning for another goal. Right? Um, we are not going to do a whole session, you know, we're doing, we're doing an interactive session. I am not talking for very long, I am talking for a few minutes. You will be doing something, and then I will be back, and so on, okay? So, for the first thing um, that I want you to think about, this is just very brief. You remember when you were at university, Roman Jacobson, the functions of language? Yes, kind of, yes. When you were in Primero de eso, and you have to study these functions of language and then linguistica general and so on. Yes? So, when we talk about input, and of course, output, we are talking about the whole picture. If you, if for example, 
input has to do with the person who produces the message, but also with the person who receives the message. An input has to do with the context. Is it a formal, informal, whatever. It has to do with the message, of course. But also with the channel, spoken, in a video, on a paper, yes? And of course, it has to do with the code, with the language. Right, so if, when we talk about input, we talk about everything. If we're doing a session on, for example, technologies, for, for example, we are going to concentrate mostly on the channel. Or if we do a session on listening, we're going to concentrate on the right side of the picture. If we do a session on writing, we concentrate on the left side of the picture. But when we talk about input and output, we're talking about the whole picture. Now, first question for you. That is a language that you probably, well, maybe somebody in this room knows which language it is. Or you can have a guess. So, you have two challenges yeah, right now. One, think about the language you may think it is. And secondly, tell me what you can understand from there or what you can figure out that is, you know, written there. Okay? So spend one minute, talk to the person sitting next to you, do it individually in three, six, four, think. Start using your brain. Okay? I will I will read it I will read it for you it's it's a language it's a language which is pronounced you know almost 100% as you write it so it would go like so har fun nim fakari shipen shan fakari shipen o hey look no da fameva all right so if it, is, if it is a clue for you, it's almost 100% equal pronunciation and writing. Okay, now, can we, can we do, can we do the technique, because you are almost 50 or so, can we do the technique of, you know, putting our hands up, so that when you see the hand up, it's time to come down and start listening, yes, because of the, right, any guesses, what language is it? Maybe Esperanto, Arabic, with the uh, European translation. Esperanto, Arabic, Romanian, Dutch, Dutch. Uh, Hebrew, some kind of Hebrew, Hebrew. Okay, Jewish language. A language from India. Okay, one of the languages is spoken in India. Okay, so five, six, up, yes? Any other? African, what? So it's, it's an African language, probably not written with the European transcription, you mean? Yeah? Were you able, were you able to understand or were you able to infer any rules from there? What? What? It's a question. Good. It's a question. Okay. What else? And 
and the answer. Good. We got question and we got answer. The answer is, is negative. The answer is negative. So we already got three pieces of information. We got a question, we got an answer, and the answer is negative. Okay. More. More. It has to do with sailing. It might be. It might be. Okay. It might be. Did you? Were you able to identify two people? Two people. Two people. Two people. Shan, Shan, and Sohai. Okay. It might be. Yes. Two people. Okay. More. More guesses? Fakari. Uh, Fakari is a noun. Might be. Might be. Yes. Yes. Shy. Oh, sheep not. Sheep not. It may be the verb. A negative verb, she said. You do want some help? A little, yes, a little bit of help. Okay. So the first word means... Oh, where, where, where? And then Fakari, Fakari is a noun, correct. You said a noun, somebody who said you said a noun, okay. A noun that means people, people or... Friends, okay. And sheep and? Go. Good. What is wood? It's auxiliary, so you're thinking in English. Good, good. You're thinking in English, so you find an accent and you say, oh, this may be the auxiliary, the auxiliary verb. Okay, good. Like do or did or can or whatever. Okay. What about nin? Is that a preposition? A preposition? Uh, a vetro minor, yes. An article? A possessive. Yeah? So you're thinking in English, I see. Good. You want more information. Okay. You, you, have, you have already decoded, decoded the question. It would be about how would you translate it? Translate it, sorry. Where, where people, friends, go. Good. So what about the answer? Can you figure out what the answer is? People, people go. go. <laughs> they go. They go running. They are runners. No, no. I, I said go before. You got right. Yeah, they go very fast. Yes. People don't go, why don't? Oh, we could say, we said not, not it was negative. Okay. People don't go to the forest. Okay. And why do you have two words with a similar ending? You go, look, nuda, fameba. It's an adjective. Good. Why? Same ending, same ending. Okay, same ending. So you're using your English and your Latin and your German? Yes? Okay, you're very close to the 100% right answer. So, definitely, the language is, you said Romanian, a language Arabic, a language from Africa, um, Esperanto, a language from India. The right answer is, Somebody said before, invented, invented. It is a language that doesn't exist. Okay, right? The meaning, the meaning, when I wrote it, when I wrote it is, where do your friends go? Okay, my friends 
go to a shady forest. Yeah, you got plenty of trees. Okay, and it is an adjective that goes with the noun. All right? Now, before, before we carry on. Right. Um, they, um, they, hand, they hand out, as you can see, is very simple. It's very simple. Yes, I didn't have much time last night to... No. Um, it's very simple. So the idea is that you got <clears throat> like three columns. And what I, what I did is to design something simple so that you, you can take some key ideas, main ideas, from every exercise that we are doing. So at the end, you get like a summary of the whole session that you can use in the follow-up activity you have to do afterwards, okay? But at least, you know, you can take some notes with the main ideas from each activity. And at the back, if you look at the back, um, there is a short, a short list of references of the books, many of them are very well known, you know, uh, but I have been having a look at those on purpose for this uh, session today, okay? Now, so what can we learn from this first activity? The old brain, old brain always tries to decode whatever comes to us. And we always are able to accommodate that new knowledge into our mental scheme. Because you have been able to say quite a few things. You were able to analyze, to find pieces. So you, you were accommodating the new co content, which was stupid, it meant nothing. It was an invented language. But you were accommodating what you found into your mental scheme. So it, that's important. Um, our brains are, you know, capable of doing more things than we actually are aware of. So when a students find or get a new piece of input, they listen to whatever, they always try to analyze it and find patterns and identify pieces they already know and try to accommodate the new thing into the other. Okay? So uh, that's a, you know, very first positive comment. We can learn even from the most difficult or the most challenging situation, okay? Now, question, Ooh, question, think, question, question, question. 
Question. Answer. Good. Question. Answer. Question. 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 One question. One question. What? What? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to carry the session. How are you going to do it? I'm going to do it with the um, computer and the mic. Why are you going to do it? Because these uh, people from the YUMP are so nice and they invited me today to come here to the session. Where are you going to do it? Here in this beautiful room. Yes? Very comfortable. Yes? Ooh. With you. Okay. With your help. What do I expect? Good question. I expect you to get a lot of input from me on some output on you. How long is it going to take? It's going to take, theoretically, two hours. What am I doing after the session? Um, having a little relax and listening to my next colleague. Wow. Uh, trying to get your attention. <laughs> what is my what is my field of expertise? I don't know. Twenty seven years of teaching. <laughs> Now, what is the point? What is the point? I mean, you see, um, I have always, um, I told you at the beginning that, that I am not very, you know, uh, enthusiastic on technologies. I am more hands-on and on whiteboard or blackboard, whatever there is in the room. But I am also, you know, um, I always tell my uh, practice students who, want to, who come to school to do their teaching practice, teach a lot from very little. Okay? So, if you notice, we have spent the last four or five minutes getting input and producing output from just one question mark on the screen. Okay? And that's it. I haven't done anything else. Just getting your questions and giving you answers. So I have been getting input from you and providing output from very little. So what we learned, what we learned from this activity, take advantage of what interaction gives you every day. Okay? Don't don't expect the students only to consume input. That's very easy. You give them the textbook and they consume the textbook. They fill in the gaps and they do whatever it is. And they are simply consuming, but they are not producing. Okay, one, one student produces some kind of output. You were asking me questions. That was, that was your output and that was my input. Okay, so take advantage of what interaction can do for you. So try to make your classes very communicative. It doesn't matter what you talk about or how you start with it. We have started with just one simple question mark, question word, or question mark, sorry. Okay, and we have been doing four or five minutes. Of course, at our level, 
but they can do it at their level. I didn't want you to ask me about the session. I, I was probably expecting all the questions. Like where are you from or how did you arrive yesterday or what did you do yesterday evening? I mean, okay, I was expect expecting just questions. Okay, so take advantage of interaction as much as possible. Now, I mean, we are in slide uh, number six or seven, whatever it is. And, and this is what? This is the outline of what we are doing. You, you can figure out. So, the starting point is that we have, we think, or all of the students simply as consumers of input. But we want to, you know, transform students into producers too. Okay, that's the idea. They can provide a lot of input for themselves for their mates, okay? How are we going to do it with interaction? I told you I will be talking for a little bit and you will be doing something for another little bit, okay? And what you get at the end will be helpful for the follow-up after the session, right? So, after this time, do you think we can be able to give the definition of what input is? What is input? The information that we get. The information that we get from, from the students. Only reading. Okay, you get information from reading and from listening and from watching. Uh, from your senses. Very good. Very good. Okay. Is that is it only inf what kind of information? All type of information, not only written. Okay. So we can have I mean, the source of information can be varied. It can be written, or it cannot, it may not be written. Okay, good. So what is lesson input? What we, what we require in order to produce output, correct, in a classroom, Good, good. Well, these are more or less appropriate definitions, okay? What is input? Whatever gets to our minds. And it can get to our minds through our senses, not only through our eyes, okay? Uh, in the shape of languages, of language or images, or, and or, and or. And what is lesson input is the same, but you know, what is the information that we provide the student so that they can construct meaning. Correct? Good. Now, if you, if, if you have ever seen, if you have ever seen uh, this, um, this shape, okay? Language learning sometimes is represented by a pentagon with the five corners. And um, they always give one for both the speaker, for the teacher, and for the learners. Another one, another of the points of the corner is for the language. Another for motivation. This is probably written by some you know, of the followers, the gardener's followers. And then another one for material. Okay? Apart from motivation, if we take this corner away, all the other four elements have to do with input. The person who produces, the person who gets it, what is it made of, is the code, is the language, and where is it in the material. So input is, in this, you know, pentagon definition of language learning, almost in every corner of the, of the shape, okay? But sometimes, 
language learning is represented with a triangle. And they get rid of a couple of elements. So we only have people and language. And then we have the input everywhere. Okay? And the code and the person who sends the message and in the person who decodes the message. So input is almost everything. Right? Good. Okay, and now it's your turn. Right? Now in threes or four, okay, more or less. I need from each group two pieces of paper. Okay? And one piece of paper. one piece of paper, in one piece of paper, and write the word spring, and then try to draw, try to draw five or six things, objects, elements, that you connect with the word spring. Okay? Okay? So one of those might be that. Okay? So in each, in each page, you do the word spring and five or six objects, ideas, elements, things, animals, whatever. Okay? When you do that, we take the next step. Okay? Drawing, yes, drawing. But each group has at least one page, one, one piece of paper with five or six little drawings. Correct? Okay. Now, you, can you tear it from the beautiful notebook? Yes, because we are going to use it with another group. Can you tear it? Tear the page from the notebook. Right? In, in, one per group. Correct. One per group. One per group, yes? Now, in, in a second, second page,
quinto, sexto de primaria language, present simple. Sentences with a gap. Okay. And, and the word that should be in the gap is one of the words that represents, that, I mean, that is represented by one of your drawings. Okay? So in the second page, write five or six sentences with gaps. One word, gaps. In another page, in another page. Not in the same one, in a different page. Okay, 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 you and I, I told you to look at my hand up, thank you, thank you. Now, so I said five or six sentences, I mean if you got two or three no problem. I want just to have an example. Okay? Now, can you, next step, can you swap, can you pass your drawing to the next group? So can you circulate only, only your drawings? Only your drawings? Only, no, not yet. Only your drawings. Circulate, pass your drawings to another group. Swap Swap your papers, okay? Okay, did you, sh did you pass it to another group? Your drawing, pass it to another group. Can you swap your drawings? You got a different one? Did you swap it? Did you? Did you? Good, good. Okay. Now, now, um, now that you have the other groups drawing, you have probably found similarities to yours. Okay, now, okay, now, can you now, with the new drawing, can you write, just as an example, two or three sentences, complete sentences, where some of those words are included? Now write two or three full sentences, including one of the words, or two of the words that you got in the new drawings. So each group needs a drawing. Here you got one. <laughs>
All right. Now. Okay. Now. Um, each, each group, each group, you know, has written at least two, three full sentences from the new drawing. Okay? So you will say, this man is crazy. First, he told us to write a sentence with a gap. But we didn't fill in the gap. And now he tells us to write full sentences from a new drawing. Yes, and a little bit mad. No. What I wanted to do is to show you the power of non-linguistic input. We can build up a lesson from students' drawings. And they are providing input. They are providing non-linguistic input for their own mates. Correct? So, it has, this is very powerful because they are, you know, they are giving, you are giving everyone the opportunity to do something. There are people who are not brilliant with the grammar, but they are brilliant with the arts. So if you ask the students to do the drawings themselves, you are giving them, you know, you're empowering your students. And also, you are also um, giving a chance to diversity. Because, you see, from the same input, you can at least do two different activities. The first one, the first one, imagine, imagine that for the first one, the teacher gets the drawings. So you take them home, you write the sentences, and next day you work on the sentences based on the drawings they have done. If you get the blue tag, you know, blue tag on the wall, and you do a drawing exhibition so they can go look at the drawings and fill in uh, the sentences. But at the same time, if they are quite good, they can write the sentences themselves. Okay, so non-linguistic input gives you plenty of opportunities to work at different levels and, you know, to make a little bit happier everyone in the class. Okay? Usually students who are good at art don't have the opportunity to show how good they are. Okay? So let's give non-linguistic input. Let's give images you know, to power they make. Right? So we said that there is, of course, linguistic and non-linguistic input. And Learners, you told me before, somebody said very well, learners get input from their senses. Okay? They can read text. They can look at images, photographs, posters. They can listen to audios, whatever. And they can watch video, audio, pictures and images together. Films, movies. Okay? Because, because of that, because of that, we could say that at least, that at least there are four types of input. Would you be able to say which are those types of input? We can say that there is visual input, good, oral input, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, audio, or, yeah, what? Oh, something that they touch, hands-on, hands-on, and the most common, written, written. Okay, right, good. So what we usually do in our classes is, you know, is to ignore is to ignore the one on the left and make, you know, bigger use of the ones on the right. Written, visual, spoken. But we don't do very much with hands-on. You, 
you're teaching math or social science, and you know what do you have to teach? What? The time. Very good. The time. So, the time. What is the time? You ask, what is the time? What is the time? And you answer, there is just no battery, so it, it, it is not working. It is, whatever it is, half past ten. Okay. Now, you can learn about the time in a, in a, in a watch. Is that a watch? Oh, you can, you, can learn, you can learn about the time in a watch or in a clock. Good. In order to, to read the time, to know about the time, you need to... Oh, two hands. Good. A short hand and a long hand. Very good. Can you see the short hand and the long hand? Okay. One goes very fast, correct? Very, very fast. With this? The long one. Okay. And one goes slower, and that is the short one. Good. 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 It is round, yes? The body, the body is round. The body is round, okay? And you got numbers. How many numbers? Twelve numbers. Okay, you, at the top you got? And at the bottom? Good, good. Okay, this clock, this clock is round. And it is? Green. Oh, very good. This is? Two base, good. And this is flexible because it has a because it has spring. Has a spring. Okay, good. And also this little one has two horns. Horns. Oh yes. And this this watch is from is from abroad. Well, yeah, it might be. It's from from China, yeah. It's from from Pamplona because uh, there is some for me. And they were running the bulls and they bought it like a souvenir. Yes, yes, good. It's from uh, from home. Yes, I took it from home to show it to you. Okay, so it's my it's my watch. It's my clock. Okay, and I remember when I. When I bought it, I remember when I bought it. Yes, and I bought, I bought it in for me in a new shop in a IKEA. No, no. Okay, right. So we are teaching. We are teaching with the hands on input. Yes, and you can teach or you can revise a lot from an object that you can touch that you can share, that you can pass to another one. Okay? And when you use objects, you are not only, you are not only learning or revising language, vocabulary, but you are also uh, activating all the parts of your brain which have to do with your memories, with your feelings, with your emotions. You remember where you bought it. You remember, for example, how you felt when you got it. Or you remember a special occasion. You bought it in San Fermina, so I remember the trip when I went to Pamplona and I bought it. You know, when you use hands-on input objects, you activate all the parts of your brain. So we, we shouldn't ignore that. And that is also another part of learning. It's not only, you know, something as cold as vocabulary, you know, like single items or content because I'm telling and teaching the time, so we have to learn the time, minutes, one, the hands and so on, but you're also activating all the parts of your brain, okay? So students do very well with hands-on. I have seen in some schools, primary schools, where um, the students are asked to bring something they love Yes, and they have to speak just a few sentences 
about this is my favorite uh, teddy bear, and I like it because blah, blah, blah. Just simple sentences, maybe two, three, four sentences, but they are talking about themselves. They are producing output, and their colleagues, their mates, are getting input. Okay? And you're activating, you know, all that area of emotion, memories, and feelings, and so on. Right? Um, when, when I do, if this is, it has nothing to do with primary education, but when I do um, the oral exam in segundo de bachillerato, you know, most students just learn by heart one long text, five minutes, and they just start talking about it. But I give them the chance to bring something and talk about the object or objects. And usually when students do that, they do the best presentations in the class. I remember the best student that I had two years ago, and he was, uh, you know, he was an amateur photographer. So he took two or three different cameras, and he simply explained the differences and similarities between the cameras and how they worked. His presentation was simply brilliant, because he was talking about something that was so close to him, all right? So don't ignore, don't remember always the hands-on, something, things that you can touch and feel. If possible, if possible, a combination of different type of input, that's ideal, okay? Where you can see a movie and you got the written subtitles or something that you can hear and read at the same time, or something that you can read and look at at the same time, like a comic, okay? Look at that, look at that. You got two pages from two uh, textbooks. The one on the right is from a cuarto de primaria, social science, um, you see, and, and the topic of uh, uh, romance, okay? It's at the end of the book in Cuarto Primario. Is this a book that you recognize that you are using in many, one, in many of your schools? No? Well, there's a romance in, in a book in Cuarto de Primaria. <clears throat> what can you see in that page? What can you see in that page? Plenty of text. Correct. There is plenty, plenty of text. And very little very little pictures. So that page is aimed for 10-year-old students. Motivating? It favors understanding? Very little. Look on the left. It's a photocopy, it's, it's a page, sorry, from a textbook that has been very popular in Segundo de Bachiller. From us, it was um, one of the collections from Oxford, okay? Even though, even though <clears throat> it is for segundo de bachillerato, look how rich, how rich the whole page is. Because there is a combination, a very rich combination of very specific vocabulary for law and justice, but with plenty of drawings. So understanding, understanding is very easy. There is a, a lot of implicit content in the whole page. You see, simply by looking at the, at the drawings, you can almost infer everything you need. Or you can follow the story, even, you know, even though you don't read the, the text, you can infer the story. Okay, so look at this, and it's also so funny. Can you, see, can you see, we are going to spend 30 seconds, how funny these drawings are? What, what can you find there? Look, look, tell me. It's funny. I like it. I love it. It's one of the best pages I have ever seen. It's, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't, it doesn't go across, but it just goes down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so the story is one, two, three, four, five, six. Look. You see? Um, have you ever, can you identify those type of shirt, black and white? How was it? Traditional uniform, prison uniform, 
when someone was um, in prison, they used to wear in the past this kind of um, <coughs> sweater with a black and white stripes. That's just stupid. You are going to commit a crime, you are going to rob, uh, to steal something, and you wear, you wear like a criminal, as if you already were in prison. That's crazy. Okay.